Good morning. We are delighted you're with us for worship at St. Andrew Christian Church. A few things you will need to know as we share in worship together. First, we want you to know of our bulletin availability. It is on our website. If you go to the online worship tab, you can click on that and you will find a button for the worship bulletin for the day. It will allow you to see the order of worship. It will allow you to see the words of all the music that we will sing in the service. And want you to be able to sing along, if you wish, in your home. We also have communion each week. And it is a very special time of our service. It is one of those sacred sacramental moments. And we invite you to gather some communion elements. And whatever you can find in the house will work. There will be a time toward the end of the service you will be invited to share in those elements. And want you to have the opportunity to take part when that time of the service comes. We have an oil lamp that we light at the beginning of our services And this oil lamp has been lit since the beginning of our pandemic period. It is a symbol of hope in the midst of separation. It is a symbol of courage when people feel weak. It is a symbol of connectedness when people feel lonely and isolated. May this light be a continued symbol for you of God's strength and God's presence in your life. As we enter this time of worship, may we prepare our hearts and minds as we open ourselves up to God's presence and God's leading in our life. Welcome to worship today. Let my people 
From all of our separate places, we have gathered together, and we are standing on holy ground. God calls us to pause, to pay attention, to listen, and love. May the peace of God be with you all. Now I invite you to share a word of peace with someone either in person or take out your phone and text or email them. Hi, I'm Annette and this is AJ and we're happy to talk to you today. We're going to talk about today's Bible story, which is about Moses. Oh, here's a smile. Moses, when we first heard about him, was just a baby. He was floating in a basket bas in the river. Yeah, he was in the river floating. Well, now he's all grown up in this story, and he's on a mountain, and he's taking care of sheep. What's that called when you're like the guy that takes care of sheep? A shepherd. He's being a shepherd, and all of a sudden he sees... A glowing bush on fire. A bush on fire. But the thing is, what happens to things on fire? They burn out. They burn out. This bush isn't burning out, though. It's not turning to ash. It's just staying on fire. So he gets closer. And then the bush starts talking to him. And the bush says, I am the God of your father. And I have a big job for you. So God gives Moses this big job to go and save all these people. Moses doesn't think he can do it, but God tells him that he's always going to be with him. He says, I am who I am. I will be who I will be. And then Moses knows he can go and save all the people. So I was thinking about that story. And I was thinking, you know, Moses never ever thought he would see a burning bush. And he never ever thought he would hear a bush talking to him. Is there anything going on in our lives we never thought we would see or hear? No. Nothing? Did you ever think they would close all the playgrounds? No. I never thought that. I never thought they would close my school for weeks and weeks. I never thought we would have to stay home and not go anywhere for long times. Did you ever think that? No. And then I've even heard some people say things kind of like on the news about other people, which we talked about, um, maybe saying that people who don't look like them aren't as good as them. I never thought I would hear that, because that's not very kind. So Moses saw something he never thought he would see in here, kind of like we're seeing things we've never seen before. Moses has a big job. He has to go and save all these people. And I think we kind of have a big job, too. What do you think our big job might be? To stay healthy and safe. Yeah, so we're doing big jobs. They might not seem big, but staying home, keeping our masks on, that's a big job. And school is starting, right? Yeah. That's an even bigger job. It's like a new adventure for some of us. You might be staying home and doing school on the computer. That's a job you've never done before. Or you might be going to school all day and having to wear your mask all day. That's a job you've never done before. But we know, just like God said he'd be with Moses, that God will be with us in all of our jobs. We have a big job to keep people around us safe, like you said, and protect them. If someone's being teased or bullied, we're going to protect them. We're going to practice justice and make sure everyone's treated the same, right? Yep. That's a big job, but God will be with us no matter what we do, right? Yeah. Should we say a prayer? Yeah. Okay. Dear God, thank you for being with us wherever we go and whatever job we do. Thank you for telling us that you are who you are so that we can go and be the best we can be. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for this time of prayer, there is much on our hearts. I invite you to come apart from the chaos and simply rest in God's presence and let God receive our joys, our struggles, and our gratitude as we pray together. Creator God, out of the beauty and the chaos of your creation, your voice calls, marking us as your own, inviting us to take notice, challenging us to more than we can imagine. Your light and your warmth draw us in to your sacred presence. And yet there are times we have chosen to ignore your call 
listening instead to competing and distracting voices. Forgive us for those times and attune us to the needs of others. Set our feet in the direction you intend and equip us for the work you would have us do. Help us to listen, to respond, and to find our place within your creation. Holy One, we know that you hear our suffering, so we pray for our world and community, for those grieving the loss of loved ones, for those struggling with physical and mental illness, and for all of us as we navigate the isolation and daily difficulties of living in a pandemic. Today we lift up students, parents, and teachers as they continue to discern their best course to a safe and productive school year. We pray for racial and political divisions that hold us back. In a world filled with discord, show us the way to peace and newness of life. May the fire of your sacred justice burn in our hearts as we seek to follow you. And may our hope be always in you as we join our voices together. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from the book of Exodus. The third chapter, the first 12 verses. Listen that by faith you may hear God's word for you this morning. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses! And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place in which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. I have come to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come. I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you. It is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. The word of the Lord. God blesses the reading and hearing of the word. May we pray together. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 
If I were to start with a phrase today, I would simply say a phrase. My guess is you could name who the phrase references. The phrase is simply this. The boy who lived. That phrase became popular by J.K. Rowling in 1997 when she wrote the book Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Harry Potter lived. He survived the evil of the one who should not be named. Not only did he live to tell about it, he lived to fight that very evil that he avoided as a small little child. Little did we as a society know that in 1997 that Rowling would create a series of books that would capture not only our country but the world around the goodness of a young boy who sought good over evil. Rowling tapped into what we know is a larger narrative that's been operative over time and generations. She knew something of this struggle of good over evil when evil seems insurmountable and somehow good flourishes and thrives even in the midst of this power that's out there that seems unable to be conquered in any way. Our story today taps into that same narrative of Harry Potter. You know, how does Moses and Harry Potter even connect with one another? If we were to go back to the beginning of Exodus, just a few chapters before, because we're only in chapter 3, we would soon discover that Pharaoh is concerned about the growing population of the Hebrew people and their potential power compared to the power of the Egyptian people. And he makes a decree that all male Hebrews that are born are to be killed. Moses' mother quietly goes up to the banks of the river, puts Moses in a basket, pushes the basket up the river, and hopes the very best her child. We know that Moses ended up being the boy that lived. He survived right under the household of Pharaoh himself. And it's only when Moses is scared after defending the Hebrew people that he flees, ends up in the place of Midian. And becomes a shepherd. A wayward path from where he was to where he is. This narrative of Moses and where he finds himself is one that's interesting. This identifying someone, God identifying someone to rise up against evil and oppression. It's not an unfamiliar story, just as I shared it with Harry Potter, it's with Moses. We find it in other movie themes. We see Luke Skywalker up against the Empire. We see Frodo Baggins up against Sauron and the powers of Mordor. We saw it in 1955 when a woman stepped aboard a bus, sat toward the front, and because of the color of her skin, was being encouraged to move on to the back where her own colored people sat. She refused and stayed at the front of the bus. End up creating an energy and a wellspring of momentum of the civil rights movement. Rosa Parks is often considered the mother of the civil rights movement. And Martin Luther King Jr. came along and credited much of her own fortitude 
when the odds were all against her, she was willing not only to stand, but to sit for justice. It happened in the 1960s in Latin America and Central and South America when poverty and social injustices were at a high, when dictators of those countries oppressed people to the place where they had no other action but to respond and to fight for their livelihood. It was out of that 1960s period we get the liberation movement and what later would become liberation theology. Liberation theologians would say it's the preferential option of the poor. Gustavo Gutierrez of Peru, Leonardo Boff of Brazil, John Sabrino of El Salvador became three of the most powerful religious and theological voices that gave energy to people at the grassroots, the common person, the individual that stood up against this higher order of evil. How can our world ever be different? But we know. We know that God listens to our cries. We know that God knows something about the sufferings of our existence. Moses found himself on Mount Horeb. And it was in that moment that God decided to get Moses' attention. The infamous story of the burning bush, the bush that was burning that was not consumed. Moses could not look away. How can this be? He said to himself. It was in that moment that the voice of God calls to Moses and says, Come, but not too close. You're standing on holy ground. I'm sure Moses was not only interested, but in awe of that moment. It was in the sacredness of that encounter and that place and that experience that created this dialogue between he and God. When God says, I know the plight of the people in Egypt. And Moses, you're the one that's going to help them be free. Help them be out of an oppressive situation. Me? Me, God? I'm just one person against the Egyptian empire, the Egyptian rule against the Pharaoh who has all this control of people. Me? It was almost as if this moment, this sacred encounter shocks Moses back into the reality of his true calling. He had fled Egypt out of fear of his life and found himself out in the wilderness as a shepherd. Wanders his way up the mountain and God invites Moses to re-examine within himself to reawaken within him the very calling that God had on his life. Not only was he the boy that lived, the boy that could tell about it, but now was the boy, the young man, the maturing man, that would go to fight against the very evil that he had fled and survived. Many of us can find ourselves in a bubble of protection, trying to avoid pain and struggle and heartache. No one wants that in their life. No one says, well, bring on the pain, bring on the struggle. I mean, we want to avoid that if all possible. We'd rather be numb to the pain than to deal with it or to navigate through it. 
But one of the things we discover in this passage in chapter 3 of Exodus is that God listens to us and responds to us. God is not a passive God. God is a creative God that works through people to help rise up against evil and oppression in the world. I mean, think about it. Moses leaves the mountain, and he's got his all-powerful stick, his staff, and maybe has one or two other people with him walking into Egypt against Pharaoh and the leaders and the soldiers. And what chance does he have? The narrative, the human narrative is clear. At some point when the human story develops oppressive regimes... God will identify people or particular persons to rise up. We often wonder, does God hear me? Does God hear us? And we are called to stop and listen. Maybe listen within, or maybe to observe and to listen to those around us, to prophetic voices to compassionate voices, to passion-filled voices. We have a God who hears our cries. And God lifts up people like Moses, the boy who lived, who lived to fight evil, May it not just be a story we look back on in history and time and says, well, God used that person and that person lived and that person survived. May we look inwardly at us as we find our own settings of oppression around us. For those that are oppressed for the color of their skin for those that are oppressed because of their sexual orientation, for those that are oppressed for their gender identification, for those who are oppressed because they are female in still a male-dominated world. May we be the people who lived and not only lived to tell about it, but live to combat the very evil that is in us and around us, the oppressive systems that hold us down. For God's hearing us and inviting us to respond is calling us to a world that's more holistic and loving and caring and inviting and compassionate and filled with grace. Today and all days, may we be the people that lived. Amen.
We are invited into God's presence at this table. It might be a little bit different from God's invitation to Moses at the burning bush in that hopefully we're not hesitant to approach or fearful of a bush that's burning and not being consumed. But we would do well to remember that we encounter God here and that God can open our eyes, maybe remind us of our call, and as with Moses, God can equip us for whatever lies ahead. Here at this table, we receive sustenance in the form of bread, blessed and broken and shared. And we see, receive reassurance from this cup, symbolic of God's blessing and God's forgiveness. These symbols offered here remind us of Jesus' life and love given for us, nourishing us to live and love as he has called us and in remembrance of him. Let us pray. Holy One, we are grateful for the gifts we receive at this table. May they strengthen our faith, increase our love, and equip us to live out your call in the name of Jesus. Amen. You have been called. This table is for you. Come and feast. Faith on heaven's table.
It has been a joy to have you in worship with us today. If you would like to find out more about the ministry of this church, I encourage you to go to our website, which I've already mentioned earlier in the service. It mentions various ways we engage in education, in justice, and mission in our world, and finds ways we connect with one another and share relationship with one another. So please check out our website. Check out our social media outlets of Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are on all three of those media outlets. And if you want to find out more information through the website, through the Contact Us, you can get newsletters and other internal communications if you wish. Lastly, I'd remind you that as this ministry work continues at St. Andrew, your generosity is so important to us. If you would have the opportunity to make a gift or continue making a gift to help support the ongoing work of what we're about and our calling to serve in the world with meaning and purpose and cause. I'm glad you've been with us and hope you will join us again for future worship or future ministry opportunity. Blessings and thank you for being with us today. May the God of peace, the God who hears our cries, and the God who inspires us to be agents of change go with you in love and grace. Amen.